Hey, good afternoon. It's uh, January 27th. Thanks so much for being here today. I'm going to talk about something you got to talk about a lot, but I think it's good to keep coming back to. And what is the nature of the discipline that we engage in with our children? See, the Bible has a very specific goal for us. And this goal is to encourage the love of God in our children. Not to bend them to our will, not to get them to live in such a way that makes our lives easier, or even to conform to a set of rules and standards. Because ultimately, no one can do those things. See, at the heart of the Christian faith is that Jesus had to die because we could not keep any of the rules, any of the laws, any of the requirements in such a way that would make us acceptable to God. And yet we have this trap that we fall into in parenting where we believe that somehow our children's obedience will help them to be acceptable to God and to us. And we treat them that way. And that's the opposite of what God wants for us. The goal is nourishment. Not retribution, not payment for sins, not even building better character or avoiding consequence, even though those things may be the byproduct. The goal is nourishment. That's certainly the theme of the scripture. But notice here in Ephesians 6, one of the core passages that talk to us about parenting, although really there are very many, many, many more. But one of the core ones here, fathers, do not exasperate or do not provoke your children to anger, but rather, instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord or the fear and discipline of the Lord. The word for bring them up is rooted in the Greek word for nourishment. And just a few verses earlier, a few lines earlier in Ephesians chapter 5, the word nourishment is used, and it's the same word. This is just a little slight, slightly different ending and nuance, which means bring them up. But you can actually get to the point of saying nourish them up, grow them up, build them up. Bring them up can mean most anything, but this is a particular type of bringing them up, bringing them up in the nourishment of the Word of God so that the light of God shines ever brightly in their eyes, so they see the beauty of God in the direction that we give them. Yes, we have to correct as parents. Yes, we have to warn them of the garbage that's out there in the world and the danger of being selfish, following our own ways. Those things are all what we have to do, but it's in the context of nourishment providing them the right spiritual food and soil where they can grow and become the people that they were made to be by God. Every human is made in the image of God. And then we become horribly flawed by our own sin and rebellion to God. But that image of God is still there. It needs to be restored, renewed, replenished, and that could only happen by the miraculous birth, new birth, that comes from faith in Christ. Obviously, you and I can't produce that. But what we can do is give our children these words, these words of truth that will build them up, that will encourage them. Proverbs tells us that pleasant words promote instruction. Jesus says he is gentle and humble of heart and calls us to them, calls our children to him. Not with a harsh, heavy hand, but come to me who are weary and burdened. That's what we need to offer our children, the nourishment of the gospel, the nourishment of truth, the truth that will build them up, that will help them see what life is all about. As just a line earlier says, 
so that they will be able to function well on this planet, the planet that God has made to function for his own glory, and he will not be dismayed. So your discipline, parents, your encouragement is to nourish your children. And if they have this feeling that they're being corrected, that they've got to be turned around, the heavy handedness where we are discouraged with them. Biblical parenting is not about disappointment. If your children disobey and you become disappointed in them, that sends a very worldly, ugly message. Because of Christ, God disciplines us, but not because he's disappointed in us, but because he's committed to see us grow to what he's called us to be in Christ. To see the fruit of the Spirit nurtured in us so we begin to thrive on the tools of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those things. Those are the things we're to nourish our children with pleasant, encouraging words that talk about Christ. Is there going to be conflict? Sure there is. But it's conflict which is rooted in Christ being the solution. Our goal is to see children who grow up to be confident in their faith. To become teenagers who have not lost their way, but are nourished and blessed because they've heard the truth of God from parents who are broken and living a life of faith and repentance before him, not a life of demanding. This is so important. I'll talk more about it tomorrow. But nourish your children. Bring them up. Nourish them up with the beautiful love of God. These words that are bring life, not death. Be that refuge for them where they have a safe place to run so that you can lead them to Christ and not give them a hard time and not let them know how fall, far fort the, how, how far short they have fallen, but that they have hope in Christ. And that's the thought for this day. Be encouraged, have hope. Nourish your children with the truth of God's word. And that's the thought for the day. Check us out every day, talk247.com. If you haven't turned on post notifications, turn them on and the videos will come right to you. Love your comments and feedback. You have a great day and Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.